Hey, I'm Johnny. I'm Pete. And we're Filiger. We're hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. What's up, guys? And congratulations with the new record. Um, you guys took a little break from releasing music and then came back with this incredible masterpiece. Um, talk to me a little bit about Future Self and like what really initially like kickstarted that writing process. Yeah, well, first of all, thank you so much for, for having us on. Um, and thank you for the kind words. Appreciate that. Uh, you know, Future Self, I think um, similarly to some of our past albums, it's, a, it's an album that sort of came together, you know, walking on the street, getting ideas and writing them down in, the, in our, our notes app. And then, you know, of course, with the, uh, we had to change our approach a little bit, but uh, a lot of it is passing ideas back and forth. And then finally, when we were able to get into a room together, you know, just doing what we've always done, which is work on them together, get that creative energy going and, and do it in the studio and ship it, you know? I love how, versatile this this record is there's so many different sounds styles genres you name it um what was that that process like um and was this something that you guys came into the writing process of the album like saying like hey let's try so many different things or is this something that just kind of naturally happened during the process for us it, it is in many ways natural we're we're a band at this point that draws upon influences of our own and in some ways a catalog of our past experiences is heard on on this album and so really i would i would say that that it's it, it showcases at this point versatile interests that we have casey is classically trained pianist i'm a drummer who's played world music and uh, johnny is a guitarist who's himself had a lot of different vocal guitar experiences teddy uh -huh. Teddy is himself like a bassist to used to sing in a gospel choir. So we, we really do draw on varied interests. And I think this album is really a celebration of those varied loves of different music. I'm sure that must be a challenge for Johnny though. Uh, for your vocals, I feel like because there's so many different sounds and styles, I feel like you're always trying to find where and how your vocal ranges would and dynamics would kind of fit. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, uh, you got to kind of adapt and improvise, I guess. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what these guys are doing. I'm like, yeah, I felt like I were in like a rhythm, like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's fun, you know. I, I think that uh, with with music, the one thing, that, one of the things I love about it is there's always new opportunities to learn to what Pete's saying and to, you know, check out new shows finally. And and uh, so, you know, that's part of the reason, part of the fun of it all. I think this was 11 tracks. You guys self produced, or was there a producer also uh, on hand with you guys? Yeah, so we, we had a number of different folks who were involved in the album, no single kind of producer. Uh, I would say, uh, you know, shout out to Gravity Studios in Chicago, one of our favorite places to record. We were fortunate to work with a number of people there. Um, Doug McBride, Gray Tax, and Daniel Farnsworth, Mina Lauren, a bunch of, a bunch of people had a, a, a hand in this album. I would say Casey uh, Gibson, who's the you know the keyboardist in our band, he he was sort of a through line through uh, a number of his songs from kind of just a production standpoint, and so you know it's that's part of the again part of the fun of it all is like to get a bunch of people involved in it and get the creative juices flowing, and so that was the that was the story with this one. Tell me about the reasoning behind uh, opening up with such a like. Uh, a piano ballad like you did um i i loved it i loved how you start that record with that track but what was the reasoning behind that for you guys yeah you know force of the feeling so i think uh that was one that i think had a uh you know it took kind of it was sort of a shape shifter you know it took a, a number of different forms i think uh we first started that as sort of an acoustic song and then you know pete and i we were in chicago uh just kind of hammering out some stuff in the middle of uh, the cold winter uh and you know i don't know if there's a particular reason other than um it just kind of felt right when we were in the studio at gravity and 
you know, Casey came in with this piano part and that changed the whole complexion of the song. And so we just kind of rolled with it and we're excited to do that. We, we've always been a band that celebrates the piano. K Casey in his childhood would be waking up at 5 a.m. And, and hammering away at it before school. So we, we are absolutely a band that any, any chance there is to, to celebrate that, 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 that sonic element, we do it. And Force of the Feeling, as Johnny said, had, that, had a moment in the studio where we added that and loved it and wanted to give it some limelight. Pete, what did you do differently this time around with your drums and how did you step out of your comfort zone? So I've always been a drummer that's been inspired by my, by my teachers. And at this point, I've had, as I said, a lot of world music background. I've had a lot of contemporary music background. On this record, there was a lot, there was a lot more exploration of modern drum making. So there's a little, plenty of tracks where I'm hammering, or hammering away at, at an acoustic set. There's also plenty where might explore different drum machines of, of sorts. And so certainly in this record, we we really wanted to to, to celebrate modern drums, which is more more and more often a hybrid between analog and, and computers. So that's definitely something you'll see a lot a lot of a lot of um, meditations on both both traditional drum making and new era drum making as well. Does it make a difference for you personally, uh, whether it's an acoustic drum, a regular drum, like a an electronic drum? Like, does that really change the way that you play? I will say that there, there's 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 always been a, a two schools of thought: the purist, let's only play analog, and the more modernist, let future beat mentality, like let's do a little bit of both. In some ways, it's like it's like running, it's like trying to run with the newest pair of shoes out there it, it helps you along a little bit but if you had to go back to to old school shoes you'd, you'd still be able to run i happen to like playing drums with with a little bit of the modern modern electronic music because it's kind of like a dialogue with digital and that's a lot of fun to play to play drums and dialogue with a with a computer Another favorite track of mine was A Walk in the Woods. I really love um, how, Johnny, your voice is so raw in the very beginning. Um, I feel like it's so vulnerable listening to, to your, your vocals. Um, but at the same time, I love the incorporation of the violin or cello, whichever was placed on that track. Um, what was the idea behind this track? And, you know, what was it like bringing in this added instrumentation? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you. Uh <laughs> the that this song so you know it started off on acoustic guitar and this was one where when we got to the studio i think we felt like it was one that was ripe to be you know to just kind of take you know take the the sort of colors that we had in the studio of which cello there's a big cello that was in the corner of the studio so that was one of them um, we, we thought to you know, just take that and sort of see where it goes. And um, Mina, who uh, you know was sitting in this sort of main control room at the time, um, expressed an interest in you know maybe because she plays cello and she was like, well, you know. Um, and we thought you know this would be this would be an interesting you know this would be an interesting storyline to follow. And we asked her to to you know take you know, take it and run with it and see what she could do on the cello. And, and then she started playing and it was like, it totally changed the complexion of the song in a really cool way. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so that kind of was the, that was sort of like the, the catalyst to go off and just, you know, see what else we could do with that song and see where it would lead, um, which was really a fun, that was a really fun song to, to, to do in, in studio. What made it fun? For me, sometimes the most fun thing about creating music is just uh, seeing, just kind of knowing that um, setting yourself up to be surprised and not trying to put your own um, preconceived ideas onto the creative process. And basically, and, and then another way of saying that is, 
collaborating with people in a way that really kind of lets everyone bring to the table what they uh what they think the song could use. And I think with this song, um, it was really fun to collaborate with um, with Mina as, as an artist, uh, not only on the cello, but she vocally, uh, you know, brought a lot uh, to the song and just kind of see where that, that would go. And so um, I, I also think just, just the day that we recorded it, it was just kind of a, a fun day to, you know, to, to just, we just had a lot of fun in the studio. <laughs> so yeah, for me, for me, my my roots are in orchestra, playing playing timpani timpani in in the school band, and that song allows a, a drummer to to be in it, be in a symphony. It's it has it it has a rising and falling and orca an orchestral vibe, and for me, that that's what distinguishes that song. Makes it a lot of fun versus the pounding rock that we'll do on other tracks. Yeah, yeah, P was definitely a mad scientist in the studio that day. I remember we were like in the control room looking at him and he was like <laughs> doing all this stuff. It was really, yeah, it was cool. After so long of going back in the studio, it it sounds like it could be stressful uh, because it's like, uh, you know, dusting off the cobwebs, right? But you guys seem to have like had a lot of fun during this recording process. What song out of these 11 tracks challenged you guys the most uh, to either start writing or finalize? Ooh, good question. Uh, I think, I don't know, what, what would you say? Studios at this point are temples to us. We, we really are, <laughs> we, we really are at, at peace there. It's a sacred space for us. And so to say that one song in particular, what was the center of it all it, it probably obscures the fact that the whole the whole record itself was a lot of exploration a lot of return to what we always have done but also a push to do new things so we don't i don't pick i don't pick favorites we're an, an album making band we we make records not not singles and so i would actually say that the whole the whole shebang is our is is our uh, is very our diplomatic very diplomatic response uh i will I'll, I'll offer an answer here i think the fire and the sun was was probably the most difficult because we went through a couple of different versions of it but i think for good reason i think we we ultimately ended up um you know that, that was one where casey um he, you know he had an ear for the baseline that uh, teddy had put put in there and he was like you know we should we should do something with that and so we took that and that kind of tra transformed that second half of the song um in a, in a fun way so you know that's what the, that's the version of the song that ended up on the record is the kind of more dancey sort of like uh version at, at the end um we also have recorded another version which is sort of more of an acoustic style casey and i um i uh, just went in to do a guitar and piano the other day uh which was um uh you know a different version of the song so for anyone out there that will be out there anyone out there viewing this will be uh this will be out there soon so um so yeah that was more difficult but it was a lot it was again another fun one to do awesome well congratulations with the new record uh future self and Thank you again, guys, for taking the time to do this and hanging out with me. And um, I look forward to listening to more of your music. As always, it was fun. Thank you so much.